Hi, this is Mr. Rubenstein, and this is uh, part four of my series of tutorials about Math B Regions from June 2008. We're up to question number 22 uh, on part two, which says laundry owner's estimate for weekly profits is given by the equation P equals minus 4W squared plus 160W. What's the greatest number of workers you should hire in order to earn the greatest profit? Well, what we have going on here is when you have an equation like p equals minus 4 w squared plus 160 w if you were to graph that you get something like this basically if she doesn't have any workers she doesn't make any money. But if she has too many workers, she doesn't make any money either. There's some perfect amount of workers so that she would make this maximum profit. And in uh, terms of math, that's known as finding the vertex of this parabola. But they only want to know the x-coordinate of the vertex, and there's a formula for that. It's um, <clears throat> x is negative b over 2a. This is a is negative 4, b is 160, c is 0. So negative b is negative 160 over 2a, which is negative 8, reduces to positive 20. And it was really w, not x. So that's our answer, 20. If they wanted to know what was the maximum profit, you would then have to plug 20 into this equation. Always be sure you answer the question that they actually asked. In this case, they just wanted to know the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is 20. For question 23, they want you to simplify this compound fraction, x over 3 minus 3 over x, all over x minus 3 over x. Uh, a question like this, the way I like to do a question like this, is by treating the, um, the top and bottom as two separate questions and first turning them both into fractions. So in this case, the bottom's already a fraction. I'll just leave that alone. Uh, for the top, I'll get common denominators. The common denominator is 3x because you just multiply the two denominators together. So when you multiply, uh, to turn this into 3x, I have to multiply top and bottom by x. So I get x squared over 3x. And for this one, I want the common denominator to be 3x. So um, multiply top and bottom by 3. Ends up with that. Now, you divide fractions by multiplying the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. And now <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna reduce these fractions, and in order to do that, I'm gonna factor the x squared minus nine into x minus three. The x minus threes cancel, and this x cancels out with that x, and all that remains on top is x plus three, and three on the bottom, which is the answer to that question. Moving on to question 24, they have the coordinates of a quadrilateral. AB, we don't know what A or B are, but it's just some random point. R is A comma B plus 3. A is um, A plus 3 and B plus 4. And T is A plus 6 and B plus 2. They want you to prove that RA is parallel to PT. Well, RA will be parallel to PT if their slopes if their slopes are equal. <clears throat> so I'm going to work out the slope of RA and the slope of PT and uh, see if they come out to the same thing. The slope of RA, the, the slope formula is the change in Y over the change in, uh, in X. So for RA, the change in y 
this um, the change in y is b plus 4 that's the y coordinate of point A and the y coordinate of point R is b plus 3 I'm going to put that in parentheses make it a little safer there and the change in x is um, the x coordinate of the of a is a plus 3 and the x coordinate of r is a I don't need parentheses there so on the bottom I end up with 3 on the top I end up with b plus 4 minus b minus 3 which is 1 third and that makes sense to me because this is positive it's going up and it's kind of shallow so now all that's left is to prove that PT also has a slope of one-third well for PT um, the change that the the y coordinate of T is B plus 2 the y coordinate of P is B the x coordinate of t is a plus 6 the x coordinate of p is a so i ends up with 2 over 6 which equals 1 third so they are equal which means those two things are parallel uh, moving on to question 25 they want to know what's the area of this triangle <clears throat> where they've given you uh, it's an isosceles triangle 20.4, 20.4, and 50. There is a formula that's given to you in the back of the uh, Regents booklet. It's area equals one half AB sine C. And this formula is, is used when you have a triangle and you know an angle and you know the two sides around it. And that is pretty much what we have going on in this situation. 20.4, 20.4. The only thing is they gave us this angle here is 50. And we wish we knew this angle. Well, because it's an isosceles triangle, this is also 50. And they added up to 100, which means this angle is 80. So we're dealing with this scenario. Our area is going to be 1 half 20.4 times 20.4 times sine 80. Uh, make sure that you are that your calculator is in degree mode and I'm on the side that you can't see but I'm doing it 0 0.5 20 times 20.4 times 20.4 times sine of 80 and we get our answer which is 204 uh, point 0.9 and they did want it rounded to the nearest tenth of a foot and if you round wrong you will lose one point the whole question is worth only two points so please look carefully at the rounding the nearest tenth of a square foot question 26 is a statistics question it says the weights of the boxes of animal crackers uh, coming off an assembly line differ slightly from a normal distribution whose mean is 9.8 and whose standard deviation is 0.6 ounces. Well, the way you deal with those numbers is in the back of the, um, of the regions booklet, there's a chart. The chart looks like this. And what we do is 9.8 goes underneath the zero. I can't write on it, but I'll write underneath it. This 0.6 standard deviation that tells me that underneath the 1, I'm going to add 0 0.6 to 9.8, which will become 10.4. And then underneath the 2, I'm going to add another 0 0.6 to become 11. In between here, I could write 10.7. Anyway, they wanted to know how many are more than 11. So I have an 11 here. Add up 1.7 and 0.5 and 0.1 to get 2.3%. Multiply. 0 0.023 times 5,000 and you will get 115 which is the answer to that question.